If you are as cultured as any other anime watcher, one thing might come to mind when you first think of the game Nikkei, Goddess of Victory. You're here for the weapons. You're here for the heavy artillery. And I know you're here for the assault on armies of robots. If you want to see a game that makes use of Life 2D to the fullest in all aspects, including girls with guns, this is definitely the game for you. As far as the game's loop goes, you play story quests and progress the story of the game, which involves you as the Shikikan, not to be confused as Master or Doctor, with a blatant lack of ship girls to command this time. Also, Nikkei, are you literally sending robot toddlers into war right now? This is Rei, by the way, a free 5-star unit for the half anniversary, and the most precious cinnamon roll. She's absolutely adorable. I just started the game, so I don't exactly have any other choice but to bring her into battle, but I've already gotten enough diabetes from her dialogue. We must protect that smile, my fellow commanders. The main story is that of the Nikkei and their war against the Raptures who have taken over the Earth and you realise that the Nikkei are all probably human originally, whose brains were transplanted into mechanical bodies. Even so, they are all treated as expendable tools of war by the three companies that manufacture them. You as a new commander are in this unique position of changing this someday and getting to the bottom of the Rapture invasion so the Nikkei can finally stop their endless war and, well, live in peace. But once you finish some story missions and amass some of these blue crystals, you can now enter Gacha Hell with some of the worst Gacha rates and hard pity known to mankind. It's a total of 200 rolls before you get any pity from the company and there isn't even a guaranteed SSR at the end of the day except from the paid rolls. So I've either been spoiled silly by Genshin and their hard 90 pro pity and this is really normal or the devs know people will spend money for cute and bouncy waifus. This is just another day in the blue crystal mines apparently. The gunplay involves simple hopping in and out of cover while filling a bunch of robots with lead. It's as simple as it gets as far as these games go and the game is mainly carried by its life 2D models and its story. And I don't really have to tell you why the models are good. This is Rappi by the way. She is one of your starters and the devs know exactly what the memo was when they decided to design her. Personality wise though, she is the serious one who gets the job done quickly and well, she's overall just a great person. And this is the preppy Genki girl whose name is one mispronunciation away from disaster. But then again, I'm surprised I haven't seen some of the characters as um, Anis. With how much the game clearly wants you to admire their ballistics. And of course, you have Neon, the gun enthusiast who enjoys using firepower to solve all her problems. But you're not here for these three despite the fact they are the main characters after all, except they are pretty good in the story. You are here for Gacha Hell though. You are here for the super super rare SSR characters. Wait, is that not what SSR means? I've been calling them SSRs all this time and never realized this until I wrote the script. Never mind that, I've been told that the best characters from this game are from Pilgrim, but my RNG luck is just grim. Minus the pill. I've also spent a tiny bit on this game so that you do not have to. I got jack shit, so let's just forget that ever happened. Give me back my money, Nikkei. It wasn't worth it. Do not spend your money on this game for anything that isn't a guaranteed SSR, cause the roll chances for SSRs are absolute dog water. The only silver lining in getting a free SSR is in the tutorial roll, which is as generous as they get until you spend days to weeks farming for upgrades and materials to level your Nikkei. And I'm seriously gonna be honest with you, the gacha is really the only thing I don't like about the game despite it having some great art and good execution in terms of its story. If it were something like 90 to 100 rolls like most other gacha games that I've played recently that aren't FGO, I'd be perfectly fine with it. Also, make sure you remember to collect the rewards from your story progress. It's really easy to overlook and I thought the free to play experience was absolute garbage until I realized I had a ton of rewards uncollected and got 5 SSRs in the span of 30 minutes. Uh, looks like my EX rank luck is back. And this is exactly what I meant by don't spend your money on this game. This military girl guillotine was actually my first SSR and I ain't even mad. She's actually the one character that caught my eye when I first found the game. She's an absolute beast with a machine gun and I enjoy seeing all of her interactions all the time. She summons a literal dragon that falls from the sky and she has good reason to believe she actually has powers in her eye patch eye too because it actually does in her back story. I've reached a point in my long anime and manga history that I'm appreciating fan service a lot less, so the fact that Guillotine has no fan service and simply looks cool in her military style outfit is a really big plus. Doesn't mean I don't enjoy playing as Rapi or any of the other thick and bouncy waifus, but I find I have no time to admire the art when I have to play the game seriously. Because all things considered, some of these boss fights will make you go into full gamer mode. Especially this f***ing train. 
If you do play this game on PC though, it comes with mouse and keyboard functionality, which works well in some of the harder boss fights compared to a touchscreen for a third person cover shooter like this. Don't worry, the devs also have those who enjoy playing the game in the background covered. You can totally play this game with one hand or even no hands at all since it comes with an auto battle and auto aiming function so the game automatically plays for you. Works if you're doing some mindless grinding for sure if you want to just admire the art which is basically about a good 80% of the game apart from seeing your characters move around on the screen outside of combat and of course interacting with them through the blah blah messenger and doing side quests. The characters are also definitely deep and engaging in their writing and they all have their own stories and personalities that become more obvious as you progress their bond levels and advise them as their superior officer. At least from what I've seen so far, Guillotine is part of a group called Extrinsic that hunts rogue Nikes, so things get really dark really quickly in her storyline. Polly is probably part doggo, and Ray is a third year high schooler who doesn't take classes seriously and wants to eat candy and ice cream all day. Absolutely adorable as I mentioned before. The PvP aspect of the game is what makes the game ultimately competitive though, but I'd seriously not get too involved in it myself. It's just a way to push people into getting more SSR to chase a meta that tends to run away from you in most cases, and if you are starting as late as I am in about 6 months after its release, I've probably put my time into another game outside of casually hopping into Nikkei for a bit of satisfying Daka. And before this gets too long, let's go for the verdict. I do know as for all gacha games, this is a fairly time specific thing since things may change for the future of Nikkei but I have to give it a 7 out of 10 at the moment. The Life 2D is definitely a huge step up from older games like Azure Lane and FGO but the predatory monetization model is what dropped the score down a few points for me. I would have rated the game much lower but I did forget about the new player freebies that weren't actually too bad after all so they do get to keep a higher score for another day. And thank you very much Nikkei. I am enjoying my 5 plus SSRs that I got in the span of 30 minutes from all those freebies. You know the game devs are definitely capitalizing on the fact that they can sell their character designs though and it's painfully obvious to a long time gacha player like myself. If you have horrible gacha luck, you are probably going to be spending money on this game. However though, if you can resist the temptation to roll the gacha, by all means hop in for a fresh experience and a little bit of gunplay as well as a really decent story. I'd also suggest some rerolling too if you really want some better units, especially the spicy Pilgrim Nikes. And as always, stay safe, stay humble, and stay cultured in all things anime and gaming. This is the Night, and we will see you next time.